because um, this has been a very deep cheat and chat. So we're just waiting for him to come back. He's back. As soon as he requests, we continue. Okay. Hello. Welcome Hi. back. <laughs> so Precious doesn't even want to talk to me today. Come on, man. Eh? Come <laughs> on. You want me to turn this on you? I'll turn the phone on you. Yeah? Come and say hello. Come I'm and disappointed. Say, come and give a wave. Come on, come on. I am. Even a wave, just your, oh, just your head. Okay. <laughs> she's shy. It's going on like her. She's here. I I can, believe me, she's here. <laughs> she needs to put her say head. Hello, eh? head. Or even her voice. <laughs> yeah, say something, eh? Eh? Hey, Precious. Don't mind her. She's being shy. Don't mind her. Eh? Hi, Josie. Hey, you hear darling. Her? <laughs> Finally. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you. I'll call you tomorrow. <laughs> no problem. Okay, okay, so there's no way I can. Of course, I have a few questions. I want to know what was going through your mind when you were in prison. You know, you were inc incarcerated, you were humiliated, you were insulted. I'm sure when you're in prison, you had deep thoughts. You thought so much about your political career. You thought about Nigeria. But um, obviously, I know you want to explain that. But before we go there, I'm from Zimbabwe. You know what is going on in Zimbabwe. What is your opinion? What would you say about the situation in Zimbabwe? Well, I, I think it's a very co complex, complex situation, particularly today. And I would be very reluctant to say too much about a country that, um, in terms of modern day, that is today, what's going on, I don't know that much about. But what I do know is the history, and it, the history is remarkable. And the people of Zimbabwe are remarkable people. I know what Robert Mugabe was and what he did for the dignity of the African and the black man. Whether Zimbabweans appreciate that today is a different matter, because I know there were a lot of issues before he passed on. But I remember in the days of the, you know, the days of Ian Smith and the days of the, um, of the, of the resistance and the civil war and the days of um, men like uh, Joshua Nkomo and uh, all these great men who fought for the liberation of Zimbabwe. And they were great men, powerful men, proud men who fought. proud men who fought from the jungles from the countryside and took back their country and fought against Ian Smith and the white minority rule and we will never forget that we will never forget that in many ways it was harder for Mugabe than it was even for um, uh, President Nelson Mandela because Mugabe fought from the jungle and he got the country back for the black man and it's a complex area. I won't go too deeply into I know people feel sensitive on both sides about this. And I know mm. the challenges that came later. But one thing I know is this, that Zimbabwe will thrive. And Zimbabwe will become the great country that she's destined to be. She's always almost played, the, more or less played the younger brother to South Africa, which I think is very unfair in many, many ways. Because the Zimbabwean people were subjected to decades of international isolation and humiliation, subversion, subversion from Western intelligence agencies. And people were sent there to discredit you, discredit your government, and, and deprive you of being regarded or treated as a normal player in the international community. And yet Zimbabwe survived, and Mugabe survived for so many years. Well, what happened, happened, and his number two came in and is there today. And um, let's hope and pray that he will keep the flag flying, human rights uh, are respected, and the economy will begin to thrive, and uh, people will be what I know the Zimbabwean people. I have quite a few friends there. And uh, like I said, in interestingly, I had a few, when I was at Harrow School in the UK, I had a few white uh, Rhodesian friends and white South African friends there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've seen the perspective of these people. I, 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 I you know, I, I, I was at school with them. 
and the attitude they had towards black people was unbelievable. Of course, being a Nigerian, we're very proud, we're very tough. And in those days, Nigeria was very wealthy. So they could not muscle us or intimidate us. We intimidated them. And I remember having a fight with, um, with or breaking the jaw of one of the Oppenheimer boys, who's a South Afri quite South African family, many years ago when I was at Harrow School. And um, for comments he made about, about black people, and I remember him saying to me that, oh, no, we're not referring to people like you. We're referring to the blacks in South Africa and Southern Africa. I said, no, we're all one. You know, we're all one. So I know what you've been through as a people. But we're proud of you that you're still standing and you will go from strength to strength. But I will never be amongst those that will ever run down the history of a great man like Robert Mugabe. He inspired me immensely. He changed later on from all the reports we heard, perhaps. Fine. But those years that he was the Robert Mugabe that we all knew. I'm very proud of what he did. And he showed the white people that blacks are as good, if not better than them. And I'll never forget that. And your comment on corruption in Africa at large, I mean, all, almost all go African governments, there's so much corruption. Is that... Well, you what? know, I would like to, I'd like to stop you there because you see, first of all, this general demonization of Africans, which is actually perpetuated and stated more by Africans themselves than anybody else. I think it's unacceptable. Yes, you have corrupt leaders in Africa. You have corrupt followers too. You also have corrupt leaders in the West and you have corrupt followers there as well. No, we, we have Africa. to talk about Africa because we are Africans. Of course, it's also... No, 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 no. The yeah. issue is that but to say all African leaders or whatever, all Africans are corruption in Africa... I happen I to believe almost, that there is a... Almost. Right, yes, right. Yes. Even, the, even the almost. I happen to mm -hmm. believe that there is as much institutional corruption. And I was trained in the West. I've never been to school in Nigeria. And I went to the very best schools. And I understand the West very, very well. I actually happen to believe there's far more uh, institutional corruption, systemic corruption in Western governments and the Western democracies than even in Africa. You know why? Because they will take money from African leaders and keep it in their banks. And they will label African leaders as corrupt, but yet they will keep the proceeds of that corruption in their banks and use it. And they've been doing that for years. They will start wars on false premises just to take somebody's oil. It has happened over and over again. It happened in the, uh, uh, in the, in the Gulf War. It has happened before then, and it will always happen. They have this, you know, colonization. Look at what they did over the years, the various colonies that they had. Millions of people killed, all their treasure taken, their people enslaved. We could go on and on and on. And you come to the modern day, the whole concept of, of, um, of, of what you call neocolonialism, uh, which is the second slavery, which is that you lend somebody money through the international monetary institutions, which you control, mm -hmm. they now owe you. The debt now becomes so huge. The interest is greater than even the original um, uh, debt that was incurred. And you've enslaved that nation. And you have removed governments. You have imposed military governments. You have used military governments. You have funded coups. You have killed people in South America, in Africa, in Asia, Southeast Asia, for centuries years and decades right up until modern times and you tell me that you are less corrupt than us we don't have that history of doing but that they yes. might be corrupt chief they might be corrupt by they de but they develop their countries in africa they are corrupt what, how, really Let, let's talk about that for a minute how did they develop their countries let's look at britain for example are you aware of the fact that modern day britain or what is left of modern day Britain. And I love the Brits, okay? I, I went to school there. I love them. I love the Brits. But modern day Britain was funded and established by money garnered from slavery, money garnered from their various colonies. Much of that money, mineral resources and so on and so on, stolen, people enslaved, people killed. Look at what they did to India. Look at what they've done to wherever they went throughout the old British Empire. That was the foundation of their wealth and their power. Yes, they created a great society for their people. I have no mm -hmm. doubt about that. Right. But then, let's, know where every, let's know where everybody's coming from. Look at Germany, where you are today. Look at the history. Let's not forget about that. That Germany, glorious Germany, great Germany, ended up causing the death of no less than almost 100 million people between 1914 up until 1945, First and Second World War. 
That is a historical fact. No African leader has done that. Let's talk about blood on people's hands. Leopold II of, um, Leopold II of Belgium killed 10 million Africans, killed them, and he regarded Belgian Congo as his personal property. No African leader has done that. Hitler killed 6 million Jews and caused them to have 50 million people. Stalin, the great Stalin, 25 million. Uh, Chairman Mao, 25 million. We could go on. These are not Africans. Are these? And my own definition of corruption is not limited to stealing money. And God knows they've done more of that than anybody else in the history of the world. Because we never had colonies. We never went to pillage other people's treasure. But, and we never weakened other countries to cause them to be perpetual slaves. But they shed so much blood on top of that. And we need to look at it. Now, that's history. Things are better now. And thankfully, not as bad. But they must never... I mean, let me give you an example. One of the reasons why I totally detest Buhari's government. I can never forgive President Buhari for this. I will never forgive him for what I'm about to tell you. He went, to the he went to the United Kingdom, all right? And the British Prime Minister said to the Queen in the presence of three officials, and it was on television, he said, Nigeria and Afghanistan are the most corrupt countries in the world, and that Nigeria is fantastically corrupt. Now, you know, people like that, I know where they come from. I know who they are. I know what they are. He was at Eton. I understand where he comes from. I think he was at Oxford. Went to the wrong school and the wrong university. Should have been Harrow in Cambridge. But I know his mindset. And I can understand that coming from him. Reprehensible, racist attitude, which is unbecoming of any leader. Now, that's bad enough. But our president was asked by the British media the following day. You heard what uh, um, 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 Cameron has said about your people. This, he was in London. Buhari was in London. He said, what do you have to say about that? Are you going to ask for an apology? And President Buhari turned around to him in front of the whole British media and said, no, I'm not going to ask for an apology. I won't ask one. Then I said, oh, why? why? Don't you think what he said was very racist, unfair on your people? He said, no, he was absolutely right. Now, that is the kind of African leader that these people that regard Africans as monkeys love. Because to them, you know, it's called indirect rule. Put in somebody that will treat his own people like filth, that will look down his own people, go to a foreign country and say, all Nigerian students and young people are idle. Nigerians are corrupt. Nigerians are useless. Nigerians are this. Africans are that. It's unacceptable. My, my, I, I'm very, you know, relatively close to the president of Ghana. He has two children with my sister. He used to be married to my sister many years ago, Nana Akufuadu. Brilliant mind, brilliant mind, brilliant mind. Was at Oxford. Brilliant mind. Now, let me tell you what he did in contrast to our president. When Macron went to visit Accra on a state visit, the president of France, and Nana Akufuadu gave a speech which caused me to rise up and bless Ghana and bless Africa. And he told Macron the history of Ghana, the history of monetary institutions in the West, and how we as a people, that is, Africans have come of age. I was so proud of that. That's what an educated mind can do. That's what a true leader can do. And I resent the idea that Africans are always being kicked in the teeth by Westerners, being kicked in the teeth by the rest of the world, and being told that we're so useless. And what I can't stand is when Africans themselves mouth that, like little monkeys and apes, and actually believe it to be true. It's not true. They are no better than us. They had a greater break, a better break than us. And we have suffered ever since. They didn't give us a fair start. And they have crippled us at every point in time. But we will get there with the right leadership. I have no doubt about that. Look at what's happening in Kenya today. Look at what's happening in South Africa under the various leaders. Look at what's happening in Ghana. Look at what's happening in Senegal. These are great guys coming out doing well for their people. If they can do it, we in Nigeria will also be able to do it one day. And when Nigeria gets it right, Africa is on course. Because out of every five black men on the, in the world, I believe it's four or so, um, I'm, I, it's one in five, one in five or something like that are Nigerians. We have the majority, 200 million people. When we get it right, it changes the fortunes of the, of, of the African continent, and we will get it right. You say that one thing that uh, President Buhari did, and you never forgive him for that. You are a Christian, and the Bible said we should forgive. You need to forgive him. Sometimes you, maybe he was caught up in a situation whereby he, he lost it. But you're a Christian. You need to forgive your president. Yes, Chief? I will repeat it to you. The suggestion that our people 
are fantastically corrupt, 200 billion people, is an assertion I will never forgive. And I'll pray to God about that's that a, because you're that, right. That. As a Christian, as a Christian, we should be. But until he, you don't forgive where no remorse is shown. You see, a lot of people don't understand the scripture. I have, a, I have a degree in theology. I understand the scriptures very well. You don't forgive the devil. You don't, give it, you don't forgive somebody that shows no remorse. Now, I'm not saying Buhari is a devil. I'm just saying to you that you do not offer forgiveness for a man that it's God that does that. And God in his infinite mercy and wisdom can forgive anybody for any reason at any time. But as a human being, you don't expect me to forgive somebody that says, I am filth, I am corrupt, I am nothing, I'm below the white man, I'm below this, I'm below that, and I deserve to be where I am in life. And then that man is a leader. It, it really is a sad testament. And let me tell you, that's not the real Buhari. The real Buhari... <laughs> No, no, I don't mean, no, I'm not, I really mean what I'm saying by that. The real that, that we knew before, when he was um, military in Joss, and when he was in the military, oh my goodness, and when he fought in Chad against um, a Chadian rebel movement, and when he almost took the capital of Chad with Nigerian forces, I mean, that was the Buhari that we knew and we admired and we revered. He was a great soldier, a man of strength, a man of courage, a man of pride. I don't, I honestly don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. And he was so effective that the Americans had to call President Shagari at the time to say, look, this man is going to take the capital of Chad. He's moved so fast. We've seen him on the satellite with Nigerian troops because they attacked our people on our soil and he pushed them. And Gaddafi was backing that rebel faction in, in, um, in, uh, him for that you are a christian and the bible said we should forgive you need to forgive him sometimes you maybe he was caught up in a situation whereby he he lost it but you're a christian you need to forgive your president yes chief i will repeat it to you the suggestion that our people are fantastically corrupt 200 billion people is an assertion i will never forgive and I'll pray to God about that, that because you're that, right. That. As a Christian, as a Christian, we should be. But until he, you don't forgive where no remorse is shown. You see, a lot of people don't understand the scripture. I have a, I have a degree in theology. I understand the scriptures very well. You don't forgive the devil. You don't, give him, you don't forgive somebody that shows no remorse. Now, I'm not saying Buhari is the devil. I'm just saying to you that you do not offer forgiveness for a man that it's God that does that. And God in his infinite mercy and wisdom can forgive anybody for any reason at any time. But as a human being, you don't expect me to forgive somebody that says, I am filth, I am corrupt, I am nothing, I'm below the white man, I'm below this, I'm below that, and I deserve to be where I am in life. And then that man is a leader. It, it really is a sad testament. And let me tell you, that's not the real Buhari. The real <laughs> Buhari that... <laughs> No, no, I don't mean, no, I'm not, I really mean what I'm saying by that. The real Buhari that, that we knew before, when he was um, military in Joss, and when he was in the military, oh my goodness, and when he fought in Chad against um, a Chadian rebel movement, and when he almost took the capital of Chad with Nigerian forces, I mean, that was the Buhari that we knew and we admired and we revered. He was a great soldier, a man of strength, a man of courage, a man of pride. I don't, I honestly don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. And he was so effective that the Americans had to call President Shagari at the time to say, look, this man is going to take the capital of Chad. He's moved so fast. We've seen him on the satellite with Nigerian troops because they attacked our people on our soil and he pushed them. And Gaddafi was backing that rebel faction in, in, um, in, uh, in Chad at the time. So you had Libyan soldiers on the other side with rebel forces, rebel Chadian forces. And this man defeated them and almost took the capital. Shagari had to recall him and then send him back. And that's when they redeployed him and put him in Joss. And a few months later, he became president because there was a coup d'etat and he became head of state. That Buhari, the old Buhari, is not a man that would demean or degrade his people. What happened since then, I don't know. Whatever it is, it's unacceptable to me. Mm. All right, let's talk about your time in prison. 
Yeah, I mean, I was there, like so many other people. I've, I've, I've been through a lot. I've seen a lot um, under, yeah, it was government. I was detained for, uh, I believe it was about two weeks or so. That was my first taste, and I was prosecuted for seven years. I was acquitted, uh, discharged and acquitted to the day, seven years to the day. Uh, that was under Yard and Jonathan. Um, then, again, the minute the, we did the campaign, I was told I'd be locked up. I was told they would find anything. They did the same thing to me again, charged me, locked me up. I was detained for a total of three months. And, um, uh, and some of that time, I was put in Kuje prison in the Boko Haram section. The section was uh, created, built by the British. It's a very sort of secret thing, actually, you know, built by the British government. And it's like Guantanamo Bay. And that place, only Boko Haram prisoners are there. And they put me in that place. And um, I was there for some time. And it was a terrible experience. I was in the EFCC detention center in Lagos, in, in, in Abuja, and uh, so on and so on. But a total of three months. And um, very unpleasant. But, you know, for me, any great leader or anybody that wants to make a difference in this country must go through these things. And I, I never lost my faith for one minute. It never weakened me. I never felt, uh, I never felt intimidated. If anything, I gave them more problems when I was inside when I, than when I was outside. And I made it clear from the beginning, I will never change my views. I've gone too far for that. And uh, I believe strongly what I believe in. And God has always been faithful to me and will always be faithful to me. And it's not just that. The one that was the most painful is when they tried to arrest my wife for no good reason. And my one-year-old son at the time, Aragon, and um, kept her in a, you know, detained her in a bank for a number of hours and tried to arrest her and so on and so forth. And they had no reason for that. And um, they came out and lied. And of course, we proved them wrong. They had no reason for that. So this idea, and you know, I shouldn't complain because, you know, people have had it worse. Some were locked up for years. Some have had their relatives killed. Some themselves have been killed. So I've been really blessed that I'm alive and I'm well and I'm healthy and I'm strong. And whatever comes our way, we'll weather it. We'll fight it. But most importantly, we will never, ever, ever prostitute our principles or give up the struggle, no matter what it is. Nothing will stop us from doing that because we're fighting for a better tomorrow for our children. And that's the most important thing. All right. So before we wrap up, uh, if you are to meet President Muhammad Buhari today, what are the five things that you tell him? What advice? Uh, that's five. That's five, yes. Five, well, the first thing I tell him, probably the most important, is to show compassion. Show compassion and show love. Be nice, be kind. Leadership comes, leadership goes. Some of us were born into the corridors of power. I understand power. My father was deputy premier when I was of the Western region when I was born. You understand me? So I understand power. It comes and goes. And he, he needs to understand that people are going through a lot of pain, suffering. People are being persecuted. People are being killed. People are being humiliated. And it's not good enough to just act as if it doesn't matter. Show empathy. Show love. Show kindness. And most important, allow people to express themselves and achieve their aspirations. Create a better country where everybody feels loved and wanted. And if people say they want to leave, create an environment whereby People can exercise the right of self-determination, allow for referendums, devolve power from the center, stop implementing a Fulani agenda, stop attempting to Islamize the country, and be nice. And recognize the fact that this country, Nigeria, is very, very important in God's program in the end time. It's a spiritual thing. It's important. And if it is that you ruin it, it will break. And it will break under your watch. And history will not forgive you for that. People are looking for freedom and demanding it. Recognize that and let them be free. That's what I would say to him. And I'll also say, I'll end by saying this to him, that you either give us our freedom or let us perish and die because we will never accept the status of a second-class citizen or a slave. It's not in our genes. We will not accept it. We will not take it. And it will never happen. Wow. Well said. Thank you so much, Chief Femi Fani Kayode, for joining me today here on Cheat and Chat with Josie. Definitely, Thank you know, you I'll, always, I'll always be in touch and Thank definitely you, I will call for a part two. Thank you very much, Josie. Yeah? God be with you. Yeah? Shalom. Right. Bless you. All right. All, right. All, right. All the best. Bye.